Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where we're going to show you how to generate wind loads for other types of structures. This is the first video in the series where we're going to introduce you to the process of generating wind loads for non-building structures and we're also going to show you how to generate wind loads for towers. Using the on-demand videos for this course, you're going to be able to create the wind loads for other types of structures according to the ASE 710 main wind force resisting system. The main goal for this course is to show you how you can apply wind loads to non-building structures in STAD Pro. This goal will be achieved by applying a combination of STAD Pro calculated wind loads and manually calculated wind loads. Through the wind load definition within STAD Pro, you will be able to calculate the wind loads for chimneys and tanks, solid signs, open signs, lattice framework, and trust tower. The workflow for each of these different types of structures is going to be a three-step process. You're going to start by creating the wind load definition. You're then going to create your wind load cases. And then your final step would be to apply the wind load to the structure through your wind load items. We will now turn our attention to STAD Pro, where we will take a look at providing wind loads for a typically typical trust tower. The first thing we need to do is go to the workflow page control area right above the display window and select the loading tab. This will bring up the load and definition dialog in the data area at the right hand side of your screen. Let's now expand the definitions area and also the load case detail section as this is where we're going to be spending our time today. The first step in our workflow is to create a wind definition. To do that, we're going to go up to our ribbon toolbar, select the loading tab, and then we're going to find our define load systems area. This represents all the different loading types that will be entered into the definitions area in the load and definition dialog. These types of loads will provide STAD Pro with the ability to calculate certain code forces given different parameters. We're going to start by clicking on the wind item up in the ribbon toolbar and we're going to create our first wind load definition. Now for this course, we're just going to create one wind definition for the tower structure. Once we enter the name of our load definition, we'll go ahead and click the add button and then we can add more as needed. We'll go ahead and click close for this exercise. The next thing we need to do is to define all of our code parameters within that load definition. So let's go ahead and highlight it at this point and then we're going to go down to the load and definition area and click on the add button. Now once we bring up the add new wind definitions dialog we're going to notice immediately that we have an intensity versus height table. Basically, what we're going to be asking STAD Pro to do is to calculate the wind pressures on the structure versus the height of the structure. And we're going to use STAD Pro's ability to calculate this information according to the ASC 7 main wind force resisting system. Once we get to this point, we're going to be asked to enter all of the different code parameters. And of course, you should coordinate this information with the location and the geography that your tower is located in. The first thing we're going to do is select our code version. We're going to select the ASCE 710. Next, you're going to enter your building classification category, your basic wind speed, and your exposure. In addition to that, you can also enter your topography if you have any types of ridges or escarpments near your tower. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to select a structure type. And for this model, we're going to select a trust tower. Now for trust towers, STAD Pro will calculate the wind loads according to the ASC 710 Chapter 29, which is the chapter on wind loads on other structures and building appurtenances according to the main wind force resisting system. Now this common information will be used to calculate the wind velocity pressure 
according to the ASCE 710, equation 29.3-1. Once you've entered all of this information, we'll go ahead and click the Apply button. And then we're going to notice the next option here is the Trust Tower data. Here we're going to enter the height of our tower. For our tower, it's 140 feet. The width of the tower, which is 30 feet. The ratio of solid area to gross area. The horizontal cross-section type. The natural frequency of the structure, which we're going to assume is 2 hertz for this particular model. And the structure damping ratio. Now the truss tower data will be used to calculate the design wind pressure according to the ASCE 710, section 29.5. Once we're done, we'll go ahead and click on the Apply button, and then we're going to finish off by selecting our design pressure area. Now here we can see that STAD Pro has already calculated the pressure versus the height of the structure in this table on this dialog. You're also going to notice that your CF factor and also your G factor have already been calculated. Now these two factors were calculated by STAD Pro for you. If for whatever reason you need to hard code in a different value, you can activate those areas and then click apply if needed. Once you're done and satisfied with your wind parameters, we're going to go ahead and click OK. And you're going to see that the intensity versus height graph was generated. If you're satisfied with everything, we're going to officially create this wind definition by clicking the Add button, and then we're going to go ahead and click Close. And we can see that our wind tower load definition is now complete. We are now ready to perform our second step in our workflow, which is to create our wind load cases. What we're going to do is we're going to go up to the ribbon toolbar, make sure the loading tab is still selected, and then select the primary load case icon. In the Create New Load Definitions, Load Cases, or Load Items dialog, we're going to enter the title of our wind load. Now we're going to create two wind load cases for this particular model. We're going to take a look at the wind load acting on the structure in the positive x direction and also the positive z direction. Now it is up to you as the engineer to make sure that you are considering the wind load on your structures from the appropriate directions to make sure everything is consistent. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to enter our loading type. Now the loading type is used to associate the load case with the load definitions of dead, live, or wind load. This type of association needs to be done in order to make use of STAD Pro's facility for automatically generating load combinations in accordance with the code. For this model, we're going to select the wind load case. Once we're done, we'll go ahead and click Add, and then we're going to create one additional load case for wind load in the Z direction. After you create your wind load cases, you're now ready for your final step for modeling wind loads in STAD Pro on a tower structure. To do that, we're going to define our wind load items. We're going to start with our wind load from the positive X direction. So I'm going to highlight this load case, and then I'm going to click on the Add button. Once I get to the Add New Load Items dialog, I'm going to find the wind load item over in the pane on the left-hand side. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the type. Now this is used to select the wind definition that corresponds to the direction and wall that is being defined. This will be used to generate the wind pressures. Now for this particular model, we only created one wind load definition. So I'm going to select that load definition here. Now I am assuming that my wind load from my X direction is the same for this particular model as the wind load from the Z direction. Now if there are any type of environmental parameters such as exposure factors or topography that are different in different directions acting on your structure, you may have more than one wind definition that you need to consider. The next thing we're going to enter is the exposed surface and direction. This is used to select the direction of application of wind loads, either in the X or Z direction, and to control the surface for which the loads will be applied. For an open tower type structure, we're going to select wind load in the X direction for this particular load case, and we're going to give it a factor of positive 1. Now the 
factor is used in, in conjunction with the exposed surface and direction. This value influences which surface of a structure receives the wind load. This value can also act as a linear multiplier on the applied loads. By giving it a factor of positive 1, we're going to say that this wind load is coming from the positive x direction. The next fields we can consider are our ranges fields. Now these are used to define a three-dimensional zone for the wind load application. All members that have both end coordinates within the specified range are assumed to be candidates for defining a surface that may be loaded if the surface is exposed to wind. For this model, we're going to leave all of our defaults set to zero, which basically means that the entire model will be a candidate for a collecting wind load. The last item we're going to enter is the open structure checkbox. Now if this option is checked, STAD Pro assumes that the structure is not enclosed to catch wind. The wind pressure will still be calculated and the load will be applied, but the loads will be based on the projected area of the individual framing members in the model, and they will be applied in the form of align loads on members instead of nodal loads on joints. For an open trust structure, you're going to want to select this open checkbox. Now in a moment, I'll show you the difference between selecting this checkbox and unselecting this checkbox, and basically what it considers is how the loads are applied to the model. Now you may be thinking that this open structure checkbox might refer to the enclosure classification, but if you recall, we actually already specified the enclosure classification through the wind definitions. So this checkbox is specific for how wind loads are applied to the structure, not in the calculation of the wind loads themselves. Once we're done with our load items, we'll go ahead and click the Add button, and then we'll click Close. Now let's go ahead and review the wind load that we applied to our structure. I'm going to come down here within my wind load items, and if I highlight it, I'll be able to see the load arrows acting on the structure. Now STAD Pro has calculated the wind pressure through the wind definition and converted the pressure to a member load using the projected width of each member in the model. Now, as I mentioned a few moments ago, let's go ahead and just check to see what this open checkbox would do. I'm going to go ahead and at this point, I'm going to double click on this option and I'm going to say no to the open structure checkbox. If I go ahead and click change and then click close, what I'm going to notice is that STAD Pro applies the wind loads completely different in that scenario. What it's assuming is that this surface is basically being cladded, and this is the only surface that's going to be loaded by wind load. It basically, what it did was it found all the areas where you have members that are within the specified range. It calculated the tributary area to each node within this plane, and then applied a point force to the nodes just along this face. Now let's go back and take a look at what it looks like when the open checkbox is selected. Now, instead of applying that wind pressure over the whole face, it took the projected area of the members, and you're going to notice it takes the projected members, projected area of all the members that are within the range that you specified. So every member in the model, as long as it's within the range, will receive a line load from this load item. Now to finish this off, we're also going to populate the wind load from the positive Z direction. So we're going to highlight this wind load item. We're going to click our Add button, and then we're going to find our wind load. Again, we're going with type number one. This time we're coming from the Z direction, and we're still going to be a factor of positive one. We're going to leave our range fields alone, and then we're going to select our open structure checkbox. We'll click our Add button, and then we'll click Close and we'll be able to review the load arrows for wind load acting in the positive Z direction. Now, if this is all the wind load that should be considered for your tower structure, you could be done with this particular workflow. If, however, there are any additional items on top of your structure that are contributing to the wind loading, you may want to add some additional loads to take care of that. Say, for example, on my tower structure, I have an antenna at the top of my tower. Now, the antenna is collecting wind load, 
But the antenna was not modeled directly in STAD Pro, so it's not being included in these load items at all. Now, if I want to include some additional wind loads, say for things like antennas or satellite dishes or whatever else is hanging off your structure that is collecting wind load, you can add that to each wind load case through an additional wind load item. What we're going to do is let's go ahead and highlight the wind load in the positive x direction. We'll go ahead and click the Add button, and you can see here I can use any of these other types of loads directly within this load case to add some additional load if I needed to. For this model, again, I'm going to assume there's an antenna at the top of the structure. I hand calculated the magnitude of wind force that should be acting at the base of that antenna as 10 kips. I'm going to enter it in as a nodal load in the X direction. We'll go ahead and click the Add button and then click Close. I'm going to do the same thing in the Z direction. Now at this point, this would need to be manually applied to the model. So I'm going to highlight the load case or the load item that I'm taking a look at. I'm going to use my cursor to assign and I'm going to turn on my nodes cursor. That's available in the geometry tab of the ribbon. So I'm going to say use cursor to assign and I'll click the assign button and I'm going to select the top of the tower where I'm expecting that load to be applied. Once I'm done I'm going to turn off the assigning button and I'm going to do the same thing for the Z direction. So now if I were to take a look at this model and perform the analysis at this point, the wind loads that were created for my wind load definition, along with any additional load that I want to add to the model, will be considered simultaneously or in tandem within the same load cases. So I have two different load cases for wind from two different directions. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.